Hello, um, this is Kristen Marshall, and my presentation is on marriage and gender. So a little background. Um, the history of marriage is that families were first considered to be groups of about 30 people with several male, male leaders and multiple women and children shared between them. And the first recorded evidence of a two-person marriage dates from about 2350 BC in Mesopotamia. And the original purpose was to bind women to men and guarantee the paternity of the couple's children. So since in these families there were multiple males and multiple females and they all were having kids together, um, it is believed that marriage was initially started so that um, the males would know which children were theirs. And from there, it then became used as an alliance between families, sometimes within the family, to the point that many anthropologists believe a majority of marriages throughout history were between first cousins. And polygamy was widely favored throughout history. Um, typically, polyg polygamy, I believe is how it's pronounced, is where a man marries two or more women, as well as polyandry, which is when a woman is married to two or more men. And then monogamy, started to come about because of the Catholic Church um, and it started to become common in Western marriages between the 6th and 9th century. And then from there when it came to the law, marriage licenses started to become common in the United States in the 19th century. And I also want to make sure I state that the I'm focusing solely on um, heterosexual marriages here in Western cultures. So this is Kind of the general background around marriages and then from here on out we're focusing on western cultures so the presentation of the bride um so veils signify modesty and purity and the veil was initially used to keep evil spirits at bay and it was typically black and it was also used to hide the bride's face during an arranged marriage or well before so that way then the male wouldn't leave beforehand um, due to seeing her, um, as well as not seeing each other before the wedding was originated from arranged marriages. And wedding dresses were typically any color except for green, as green was seen as unlucky. But usually they were very rich, and I know red was a bit more of a popular color, but blue was also extremely popular because it represented purity, religion, and was connected to the Virgin Mary. And then the white wedding dress started to come around due to um, Queen Victoria wearing white in 1840 when she got married to symbolize virtue and purity. And from there, wearing white was seen as a, a sign of status as it was very expensive to get your hands on those cloths. And the bouquet that brides carry was originally used to shield the bride's body odor and to promote fertility. So the tradition of giving the bride away at the wedding was started due to marriages being financial transactions. Um, you know, as mentioned before, that it would be used in politics to help unite two families. Um, it could be shown as good faith and the bride was considered to be property. So it was seen as more than just a transfer of a piece of property from one person to another or one man to another. And being handed off represented the transfer of authority from the father to the husband as the rights and protection of a woman depended on the man in charge of her life and before she was married that man was her father and then once she becomes married that authority becomes her husband and now in in traditions now i should say um it is viewed more so as a way for a father to confirm his blessing of the marriage so it is something that it has evolved past the transactional status of the original purpose of it, um, which is good. And countries such as Sweden reject this practice of the father giving away the bride due to it, how it grew from oppression of women. And a vast majority of brides in Sweden walk down the aisle with their husbands as a declaration of equality. So female ownership is also very popular, as this previous slide suggests, in weddings, especially in the history of weddings. 
as well as purity. And one of the ways is that the female wedding ring was initially a way for the groom to pay the father of the bride. So it was kind of seen as like, you know, there was that old joke as I'm sure a lot of us have seen on TV shows or movies where the groom will give the father a pig or something in honor to marry the daughter to where you have to give that trade. So that's kind of equating the person to the animal. And the honeymoon, interestingly enough, started when marriages were created by kidnapping the bride. So males would kidnap the woman they wanted to marry and would then have to hide away with her so then she wouldn't be found so they can stay married. And the, um, and so that was why the honeymoon initially started. And, you know, obviously we've moved a little bit farther back from it, but it is interesting that the initial purpose of going on the vacation and getting away from everyone after getting married was due to a woman being kidnapped. And in in kind of the same spirit of that, the original purpose of the best man was so he could fight off the bride's family when the groom kidnaps her. And just another thing of in regard to the female ownership and female purity that I thought was interesting was when marriages um, were becoming more popular and as, you know, I'm sure, again, as we've seen in probably historical TV shows or movies in the media, um, men commonly had extramarital affairs. And due to that, they received little to no backlash, even if they've fathered children, as we know, they would just be considered illegitimate. Um, whereas if a woman were to have those extramarital affairs, they would be severely punished. Um, I couldn't find anything that said what would happen, but all of the articles just agreed that it was not good for her. So there obviously is quite the double standard in regard to um, wedding traditions. When looking, when doing the research for this, I couldn't find anything specifically on male wedding traditions. They were just more so about the best man and about the bachelor party. And the bachelor party actually, it has its origins back to the 5th century BC, and it was to celebrate the man's last night of being single. And something that was interesting is the female counterpart, the bachelorette party, did not start happening until the 1960s, which is when um, the feminist movement started to really gain power. Not power, more so... <laughs> gained a little bit more prominence, I think is the right word. Um, but what's been around for some time, and I could, no, none of the articles could agree on the exact date, was the bridal shower. And the bridal shower is something that is seen as enforcing gender kind of stereotypes and femininity, the traditional form where, you know, the woman sits and is grateful and um, receives gifts that are typically having to do with homemaking, such as pots and pans, plates, anything like that and appliances. And the final thing on here is something that is a little disturbing. And it went around a couple years ago regarding a group called No Hymen, No Diamond, regarding of the female needing to be pure before marriage. And this was a Facebook group created by men's rights activists who refuse to marry a woman who is not pure or has a number of sexual partners they believe make her unworthy. But there's, of course no mention of his own number of sexual partners and if that makes him then unworthy. So just an interesting little double standard and to show of how obviously these traditions have, the heart of what created these traditions are still kind of felt today. So in conclusion, weddings starting as, started as a way to ensure paternity of children and as weddings evolved, women were seen as property and could be traded for marriages to create an alliance. And the outfit of the bride represents purity and virtue, and her father gives her a way to signify the transfer of ownership. And the emphasis of female, female purity before marriage is not as prominent today, but it obviously is still around. <laughs>